Good evening, everybody. I'm KHOU 11 Chief Meteorologist David Paul with your tropical update for the Atlantic Basin here on this Tuesday evening, August the 17th. We still have three active systems out there to one degree or another. Fred, the remnants are bringing heavy rain to the Virginias and the Carolinas right now and a tornado threat. We'll go over that. Grace is forecast to become a hurricane tomorrow. That's the one in the Caribbean. And then Henri is expected to also become a hurricane as it uh, circles the island nation of Bermuda. They're both tropical storms right now, but I think we may have two active hurricanes, Grace and Henri, as we head through the next uh, 24 to 36 hours. Okay, so we've got remnants of Fred, Grace, and Henri. That's six, seven, the eighth uh, storm of the season has formed, named storm. That's eight so far in this 2021 season. Now, by this time last year, we already had 11 named storms, and if you count the tropical depressions, we actually had 12. So we are a decent number behind in how fast we were moving forward compared to last year's tropical activity, which was a record breaker. Okay, these are the remnants of what was at one point Tropical Storm Fred, now just the remnants uh, of Tropical Depression Fred. Uh, that being said, when these storms make landfall, even hundreds of miles inland, they still have a tremendous amount of twist or vorticity to them. And that interacts with the surface boundary layer. There's a frictional element that, that takes place. And what you often get because of that are a lot of tornadoes. And as we look at all the weather watches and warnings going on this evening, right now we've got red. Those are flash flood warnings. This is a tornado watch and severe thunderstorm watch. That's a severe thunderstorm warning. And see the pink box here near Columbia? That is an active tornado warning. And I've been watching this this evening. There have been three, four, five, six, sometimes at a time, tornado warnings for this band of thunder showers moving up through the Piedmont of South Carolina into North Carolina. Charlotte, Winston, Salem will have some heavy rain and thunderstorms tonight. And these also are a heavy rain threat. And so up the spine of the Appalachians through the Virginias, uh, up into Pittsburgh, Williamsport, Pennsylvania could see a good six to eight inches of rain out of this, even up into upstate New York, New Hampshire, and Vermont. So this remains a rain threat for the Northeast over the next several days. This is Henri out here in the open Atlantic. Uh, this is uh, St. George over the uh, island nation of Bermuda. The storm itself is tropical storm. It is now forecast to become a Cat 1 hurricane and just sort of encircle Bermuda as it strengthens, then races off to the North Atlantic. That'll be a, a trough picking it up and taking it out to sea. On that track, it should remain far enough off the East Coast so they won't see any significant impacts, except they will see an increase in wave activity. These uh, hurricanes, even they can be hundreds of miles off the coast, but they'll produce some swells that they will feel up and down the Carolina coast there. Okay, so now to Grace. Now this is our tropical storm in the Caribbean Sea. Grace this evening, maximum sustained winds at 60 miles an hour. It's moving west at 15. That's a pretty good uh, clip to be moving. Pressure's at 1,002 millibars. It's been falling today, but falling very slowly. And that's because the center of the circulation has been interacting with the land mass of Jamaica. There's Kingston, Jamaica right there. So all day long, the land mass has been interfering with the circulation. That being said, it has slowly strengthened, even though it's been interacting with land. And it looks likely that this is going to quickly intensify tonight and tomorrow. And I think we're going to have a hurricane on our hands in the Caribbean by at least this time tomorrow, maybe sooner than that. The upper level wind pattern has become very favorable for rapid intensification. So I've drawn in these arrows and you can see this. The high clouds, the cirrus clouds at the top of the atmosphere up at 34,000 feet are sp all spreading out away from the center of circulation. This indicates outflow outflow at the upper levels. Think of a, of a tropical system as, as a gasoline engine. It needs air to be taken into the system. That's low level convergence coming in at the surface. It fires up through the storm, releases its energy, and then the exhaust comes out the top. So what you're seeing is the exhaust layer coming out the top of the storm. If you don't have good exhaust, it's like putting a banana in the tailpipe. The whole engine shuts down. So when you've got good exhaust, good outflow at the upper levels, you've got an unsheared environment, and that can lead to rapid intensification. That and the fact that the system will be moving over very warm ocean water. Sea surface temperatures here in the Northwest Caribbean in the mid 80s, even warmer in the Southern Gulf of Mexico where it's inevitably gonna end up. And so that's heat energy. That's that fuel for that engine to run on. So it's got fuel. It's got good airflow through it. 
I think this is going to rapidly intensify as we head into tomorrow. And the Hurricane Center agrees, bringing it up to Category 1 hurricane strength mid-morning tomorrow. And then by early Thursday morning, making landfall impacting Cancun Cozumel as a Cat 1 hurricane. So this is going to impact a lot of people across the Yucatan. Over the Yucatan, it may not weaken much at all. That's a very flat terrain, perhaps down to a tropical storm briefly, and then back to Cat 1 status over that warm water in the southern Gulf. And then forecast takes it right into Mexico as a Cat 1. Wind and rain and a mudslide threat for the mountainous interior of central Mexico. I take a look at all the computer models now. Uh, this is the GFS ensemble, the American model. These are all the different arms of the GFS. They don't just run it once. We run it several times over and over again. Change uh, the components at initiation just slightly each time. Uh, but you can see all the arms really agree with what the Hurricane Center is putting out, taking that into Mexico. That's the GFS. These are all the individual different computer models, uh, tropical computer models, the spaghetti plots. And you can see they also fairly tightly agree with what the, uh, the folks at the Hurricane Center are putting out, saying mostly within their forecast cone. There are a couple of outliers, but at the moment, I think we can ignore those. And this forecast has everything to do. It all hinges on this dome of high pressure staying strong and building in over the top of our developing tropical storm, eventually Hurricane Grace. So as that storm moves on to the west, that upper level ridge of high pressure is going to move right along with it. A couple of things are going on here. First of all, this is a mountain of air, literally. Think of this as a mountain of air. As these tropical systems increase in intensity, they really want to get pulled poleward by the Coriolis effect. So it wants to go north, and it would go north were it not for that big mountain of air, that dome of high pressure. So not only is it a mountain that's literally blocking that storm to the south, but the clockwise rotation of winds around that upper level high pressure, and these are the winds at 18,000 feet, will be pushing that storm onto the west very quickly and on into Mexico. That's what that forecast is based on and hinging on. Now, these are never set in stone, so it's something I'll be watching very carefully for the Houston area, but the forecast has trended this way for the past several days in a row, and this forecast is now looking a little more confident that this is actually how it's going to play out. We'll continue to watch it like a hawk. And let me leave you with this tonight. Although we've got development in the Caribbean, out in the open Atlantic near Bermuda, and the remnants of Fred over, over uh, the Atlantic states, notice how there's very little dust here. So we're getting development here where there's very little dust. Look at what's coming off the west coast of Africa. Another huge plume of Saharan dust, the Saharan air layer, is forecast to dominate the entire Atlantic Basin as we head into Thursday, Friday, and Saturday of this week. And because of this fact, it looks like hurricane activity after uh, Grace and Henri fizzle out may be shut down for several days, if not longer, as long as this dust stays thick out here. This is an area of dry air and an area of sinking air. Tropical systems need moist air and rising air. So this is exactly the opposite of what hurricane development wants. And this should keep storms in check and choke off any new development out here for at least the next several days. So that's good news if you want fewer storms. Download the KHO U11 app so you're prepared just in case storms develop, change course, or afternoon thunderstorms head your way. You've got questions, you've got comments, leave them for me uh, at my social media. And we'll look forward to seeing you for another update tomorrow.